Okay, here goes test number one of the Lago Marcina Numeria. It hasn't been used for many, many, many years, and it's got old capacitors and all sorts of stuff inside, so this may or may not go to plan. But I've taken every precaution. I've got Big Clive's explosion containment pie dish on hand. And as backup, I've also got Diode Gone Wild's fire extinguisher. So what could go wrong? Okay. Hasn't exploded yet. It's not live on the case. So. Hmm. No explosion. Quite pleased with that. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Lago Marcino Numeria Sterling Electromechanical Calculator, model number 8723, made in around 1963 by Lago Marcino of Milan, Italy. Like most of these machines, it can add up. It can subtract. It can multiply. And it can also divide. On the left hand side there are some multiplication buttons. So for instance if I want to multiply 22 by 9 it gives the answer 198. If I want to multiply my 22 by 987, in the first column I'll multiply by the 7, then shift the carriage across 1, multiply it by the 8, and shift it across one more, and multiply it by the 9, giving the answer 21,714. For division, generally you'll move the carriage all the way across to the right to allow for decimal places. And then you add the number you want to divide into the register, so we'll try 3276, 3276, add that into the register so it's in the register there, reset the counter here, and then we'll divide that by 78, so 78. Hit the divide button, and we get nothing in the counter because on the first column 78 from 32 won't go. So we shift it across one and hit divide again. And that has gone four times but there's still some left so we'll move across one more and hit divide again. We've now got all zeros here because it's worked out exactly and the answer is of course 42. I won't do any more complex division at the moment because the carry pin on wheel 11 in the register has been broken. That's something I've got to fix at some time. At the moment the calculator is set in numerical edition mode with this lever up to the top here. That locks out the farthings that are on the right here. It also stops the carriage moving any further to the left than it is. If I move it down to the sterling position I can move the carriage all the way to the left, thusly. It also releases the farthings and the higher numbers on the old pennies. For the old sterling currency, you have farthings or quarter pennies. You have the halfpenny. Then you move on to the old pennies themselves. There were 12 of these in a shilling or 240 in a pound. You had the one pence, the twopence, the threepenny bit, the sixpence. Moving on to the shillings, there were 20 of these in a pound. You had the one shilling, the florin or two shillings, there was the half crown or two shillings and sixpence, then you had the crown itself which was five shillings. 
you had the 10 shilling note, which was worth half a pound, and then you went on to the pounds themselves, which accounts for the remaining six columns. To reset the counter at the top here, you turn this handle forwards and it goes back to zero. To reset the main register at the bottom, you wind this handle backwards. You might be able to notice there's one or two digits not resetting properly. At some time in the past when the machine was all seized, someone's forced the handle and broken several of the pins off inside. That's one of the few things I've still got left to fix on the machine. To take the machine apart, first you have to remove the carriage. There are two circlips that hold the rod in that keeps the carriage in place. I've already removed those, so I can just carefully withdraw the rod like this. Once you've taken the rod out, it's a little fiddly to get the carriage off. There are a couple of little hooks that need to be moved out of the way to release the carriage. And here we have the carriage off. With the carriage off and the four screws from underneath removed, you just have to remove the two buttons, or in my case one because the one over here is missing, and you can lift the cover off. Like this. Now you get to see some of the mechanism inside. I'll move in a little closer. When I first got this machine, nearly all of the parts inside were seized with sticky old oil that had gone solid. None of these little levers moved properly, and nothing latched as it should do, so I had to go through the entire machine, cleaning out the old oil and replacing it with new. Looking at the drive side of the machine, you've got the motor here and the main drive shaft here. This switch here is the one that actually puts electricity to the motor and the moment it's open because it's not set to do a calculation. If I put in a random number and hit the plus button you'll see this switch close. Now there would be power to the motor so the motor would spin and as it spins it engages with the pinwheel which is this lot here. That will rotate and click these gears here and these gears transfer to the number wheels on the register itself. So you'll see those in a minute, you'll see the pinwheel start rotating and then the number wheels will turn. Then when it gets to the end of the rotation cycle it'll open the contacts for the motor and the motor will stop. Like that. Looking at the other side of the machine, behind this plate is the device that reverses the direction of the pinwheel depending on whether it's adding or subtracting. Over here is part of the mechanism that latches the motor into the on position for multiplication sums. Here's a bit of a closer look at the reversing mechanism. Down here you'll see two counter rotating gears and in the middle is a dog clutch. If I hit the plus button and rotate the motor, you'll see the dog clutch move towards one of those gears and then it'll engage and rotate the pinwheel to do the calculation. At the end of the calculation it springs back to the middle and drive is disengaged. If I hit the minus button and do the same, you'll see the dog clutch move the other way, engage with the gear and turn the pinwheel backwards to subtract numbers. And again, at the end of the calculation, it springs back to centre and disengages the drive. Looking at the number wheels in the register, you can see a little pin here between three and four. That's the carry pin that actually carries the number over when it gets round to ten. And as you can see, it's missing on this wheel. That's one of the things I've got to fix. When you want to reset the register, these little fingers at the bottom move in towards the wheel and catch on the little pin here that holds the wheel in the right place so it sets to zero. The pin is missing on this wheel, so you'll see when I turn the handle the others stop, but this one just carries on turning. Like that. 
Operating the number keys moves the series of levers which press small spring-loaded pins in towards the centre of the pinwheel, or drum. When these pins are in the centre, they interact with the transfer wheel here, turning it at the appropriate amount of clicks. The transfer wheel then drives the number wheel in the register. If I type in some random numbers, you'll see some of the levers at the bottom of the frame moving. And now if I turn the machine by hand, you'll see the drum rotate and the transfer wheels move the appropriate amount of clicks. I'm sure you'll all be keen to see the machine running with its side off, so here goes. The counter at the top here doesn't have a carry function, so when the first column is at 9 and goes over to 10, it doesn't actually put the 1 in the next column. If you're adding together a big list of numbers and you need to know how many calculations you've done, there's a function where you can lock down the 1 on this end column here. Now when I hit cancel, it doesn't lift that 1 up. I can then put in a number and add it in and a different number and add it in and then maybe some more random numbers we'll add a load of them and we can see over on this bit of the register we've done 21 calculations which for certain functions could be useful Anyway, I think this video has gone on for long enough. I'll post an update when I've fixed the broken pins in the register. If you like what you've seen, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video. There'll be more vintage tech coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.